you watch my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of sports and games, and also that I think there's a huge parallel between those and this wonderful, beautiful game we call game, especially when it comes to how to get good at them. Take a high performer in any of these areas. For example, take Steph Curry playing basketball. He's acknowledged widely as one of the all-time best shooters the game has ever seen. In any given game, he might shoot maybe five or 10 three-pointers at the absolute maximum. But did you know that every single day, he's shooting 500 shots in practice? And that's been going on for years and years and years. So he didn't get good from going out and just playing the game. He got good from doing drills from practicing the techniques, practicing the individual moves that he can then use in the game. And the same is very true for game. So these sorts of drills, these sorts of missions are one of the things I'm a huge fan of when it comes to teaching my own students. And I've seen that when students are given these missions, they progress in game exponentially faster than when they just play the game by itself. So I'm gonna give you seven of my favorite missions. Let's get into that right now. When you're starting out as an absolute beginner, the biggest struggles you're gonna have is one, approach anxiety, and two, what the heck do I say? And so the first mission I'm gonna give you is meant to help you with that. It's meant to get you to just get out there and do the approach, and it's meant to make that easy. It's not meant to make everything in game perfect, it's meant to get you through that first sticking point. And what I'm gonna to suggest to you here is doing what I call a riskless opener, an opener that does not risk your ego, does not really risk rejection, that is not really putting yourself out there, but you are starting a conversation. I'm gonna give you three levels of this, from the absolute most riskless possible to something that's still pretty risk-free, but you're starting to do an actual approach. So the first riskless opener level I wanna give you is just go up, ask for directions, and then you're free to leave. So you go up, hey, excuse me, where's the Apple store? You get an answer. You can stay if you'd like to, but you have total permission, egoically, and mission-wise and strategically have total permission to leave. So you don't have to worry about what you're gonna say two minutes in, five minutes in. You don't have to worry about whether she likes you, whether she rejects you. All you have to do is go ask directions. And if you do that, that's a success. Why is it a success? Because before you were not approaching at all and now you're approaching, okay? You may not be doing a great approach yet, but you're doing a lot more than you were when you weren't approaching. So level one is go ask directions and then leave. For level two of the riskless opener, you're gonna talk to girls who are working in a sales job of some kind. And why are you gonna do this? Because they basically have to talk to you. And for now, it doesn't matter what you talk to them about. It does not have to be a man to one conversation. You don't have to flirt with them or hit on them or anything like that. You just have to talk to them. So if you go into a clothing store and you talk to a girl about a pair of pants, that counts. It's still an approach for now. It counts for now. Right? Or if you walk into a jewelry store and you talk to a girl about jewelry, that counts. If you are going to the mall and you ask the girl where the movie theater is and what movie is good, that counts. All right? So you're talking to these girls that basically have to talk to you. You're having a conversation that is very normal for them, that they're basically being paid to have. But what are you doing? You're at least making the approach. You're at least talking to some girls. And oftentimes, these girls that are in these hired jobs where they're in customer service, oftentimes they're very attractive. So hopefully you're also gonna start talking to some girls that you may find intimidating, girls that you, you know, the hot girls that maybe you thought, oh, those hot girls were mean to me in high school. And guess what? They're gonna be nice to you because they're being paid to be nice to you. But the point is, it's a good experience for you to have. You're getting, again, used to talking to girls in a riskless setting. In the third level of the riskless approach, we're gonna to start to do an approach that actually has a chance of going somewhere. What we're gonna do basically is a modified opinion opener. And the example I wanna give you of this is one that I actually used way back when I was learning game to get over my approach anxiety, and this was called the cologne opener. The way it would work is I'd go to a mall and I'd take one type of cologne and spray it on one wrist, one type and spray it on the other wrist, and then I would walk around and ask girls which cologne they thought smelled better, which one they thought I should get. I'd be like, listen, like, I'm a guy, I don't know cologne. Can you help me out? Like, which one should I get, right? If you're even less bold than that, you can take little cologne tester strips instead of your wrists. It doesn't really matter that much. The wrist is better, but you can take the cologne tester strips if you're too nervous about having girls smell your wrists. The point is you're starting a conversation where it's actually like, sort of a more legitimate conversation, you're asking an opinion, and there's a reason you might stay, and you're talking to a civilian. You're not talking to a girl at a store who's being paid to talk to, you're talking to a real normal girl. And this conversation could actually start to go somewhere, because sometimes they're gonna have an elaborate opinion, they're gonna talk to you about things. And sometimes you can ask them follow-up questions, or sometimes you can thank them for being sweet and giving you the opinion, and you'll get into a real conversation. So now you've gone through this sequence of riskless openers, they're slightly more risky each time, but be honest, it's still extremely risk-free to ask an opinion on which cologne a girl thinks you should buy. 
but there's a chance it could lead to an actual conversation and you're getting used to approaches, you're getting used to interrupting someone to get their attention, and you're getting used to having conversations with real girls. These are great steps to get you over that stage of pure approach anxiety. So now that you've done beginner mission number one, you're having actual conversations with girls. The problem now is they're very likely to be very platonic and not go anywhere, which brings us to mission number two. Mission number two is basically this. Every single conversation you have with an attractive woman that goes at least three minutes, you need to ask for contact information. So just get used to saying, hey, it was great talking to you, what's your number? That should be just automatic for you. It was great talking to you, what's your number? And yes, you can take Instagrams if you would like instead of numbers, et cetera. I suggest the number because it says a more man to woman thing, but Instagrams are also viable. The point is you need to be having interactions that have an actual chance of going somewhere. Why is this so important? Well, number one, you're gonna start getting contacts. When you start getting contacts, your game is gonna feel like a win. You're actually gonna like doing it and you're gonna walk away feeling great about the interaction. But also when you start getting contacts and you follow up with them, you can start getting dates. So you're starting to get actual real results. Maybe not on a high percentage, maybe not all the time, but it's actually going somewhere. Also, and very critically, when you ask for a number at the end of the interaction, you're gonna get a real honest feedback on if the interaction was good. There'll be interactions where you think they're good and the girl says no to the number. There'll be interactions where you don't think they're good and the girl says yes to the number. It's very important you realize what makes an actual interaction that goes somewhere. Because you may have the wrong ideas in your head. In fact, you probably do. Just because a girl's being nice and sweet and tolerating you does not necessarily lead to a great interaction. Just because there's some feistiness and back and forth does not mean it's a bad interaction. In fact, a lot of times that feisty interaction where there is a little bit of, of combativeness can actually be better. Oftentimes the interaction where the girl gives you a shit test may end up being the better interaction. You would never know that if you didn't actually ask for a number and get a real result from it. One final benefit of this mission is that in doing this mission, you're gonna be starting to force yourself to be more man to woman because you know you're gonna ask for a phone number at the end of the interaction. It's gonna motivate you to have the type of interaction in which that makes sense. So without even overtly thinking about how do I make it man to woman, your brain is gonna start trying to figure those things out and it's gonna learn what does actually make an interaction man to woman and what doesn't. So with this one little step of asking for a number, you're progressing the interaction, you're giving yourself a chance of results and you're learning to start making interactions man to woman such a critical step in your learning process. To round out the beginner level, I actually wanna give you a bonus mission. And this mission is very, very simple. It is to do direct opens. So in the beginner section, we first worked on getting over approach anxiety to the point that you can open it all. Then we worked on a mission that's designed to make your interactions man to woman. Now one huge shortcut for the whole thing is just to do direct opens. Go up and say, hey, I liked your look, I wanted to meet you. Hey, I thought you are cute, I wanted to meet you. Something like that. If you do that, you absolutely are through the approach anxiety stage. You also absolutely are gonna make it man to woman. So this solves a lot of the beginner stuff all in the first sentence. And if you're a bit bold, you can jump ahead to something like this um, to get you through a beginner. But a lot of guys in beginner, if you're dealing with a lot of approach anxiety, it may be nice to be able to do the riskless open and get used to talking. And it may be nice to kind of dip your feet in the water with asking for phone numbers and trying to close as opposed to going super direct. But in the end, this kind of direct open is one of the best things you can do as a beginner because the fundamental beginner mistakes are one, not approaching, and two, never getting to the point. And this solves all of that in the first sentence. So I do highly recommend doing this one a little bit as well before you progress to the intermediate missions. And by the way, a lot of your intermediate missions can actually start with this and then go to those things later on in the interaction. So those naturally build on this sort of a foundation. So I highly recommend adding this mission at the end of your beginner segment before you go on to the intermediate missions. Now for the intermediate missions. By the time you're intermediate, you're at a point where you can do an approach that if you do enough approaches, you'll eventually get a result. Now we're talking about how to be efficient, how to get a result more often, how to be better at the actual game part of it. And the first thing I want you to learn as an intermediate is how to move girls around, how to have interactions that don't just stay in one place, how to take girls on an instant date, or if you're meeting girls in a bar, how to take them over to the bar and over to your friends and over to sit down, that kind of stuff. If you get to the point where moving girls around becomes natural, that final move of moving girls home is also gonna become natural. And no matter what strategy you have, whether it's meeting a girl at night and taking her home, meeting a girl in daytime, taking her on a date and taking her home, or whether it's going on a date and then figuring out how to get that date back to your place, at some point, if you actually wanna be good at this game, you're going to have to figure out how to get a girl from a public place to a private place with you. 
And the fact of the matter is, the more times she's moved around with you before, and it's been fine, the more you've been a leader in the interaction, and it's been fine, the easier that's all gonna be. So it's very important to move her around. And of course, it's good if you move towards the eventual objective of your place, but for now, pointless movement is fine. Moving her to the bar and then moving her to sit down and then moving her back to the bar and moving her to the dance floor and then back to the bar is completely fine. You're just getting used to leading. You're just getting used to being in charge and what those steps are. Or if you take her to, hey, let's, let's stand here. Let's go walk and talk. Let's go walk over here. Let's sit down. Let's go walk and talk some more. It's just important that you're leading for now. So far in these missions, we've been talking to one girl at a time. But if you've ever gone out to do game, you'll realize most girls and especially most attractive girls are in groups. So if you wanna be more efficient, if you wanna spend your time actually talking to girls instead of walking around and waiting for a girl to be by herself, you need to learn to approach groups. And so that's the next mission. Now that you're at an intermediate level, you need to approach groups of girls. You need to be able to walk up, start a conversation with not one girl, but two girls, three girls, four girls. And then eventually the next level will be to start approaching groups of girls and guys mixed. That can come a bit later, that's almost more of an advanced mission, but you absolutely as an intermediate must absolutely must learn to approach girls in groups. And there's two ways to do it. One is talk to the girl you're interested in and then engage the group. Hey, talk to her. Oh, these are your friends. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The other is, hey, you guys, etc. Oh, you know what? You're trouble. And start teasing the girl. So you either go group to girl or girl to group and you need to engage both within the first minute of the interaction. Get used to doing that. This also dovetails very nicely with the previous mission of moving the girl around because one of the first things you want to do once it's going well in the group is move the girl around away from her group so that you're now in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So they go very nicely together as well. But as an intermediate, you need to learn to approach groups. So you're never gonna become advanced if you don't master that skill. Next up, intermediate bonus mission. If you followed the missions to this point, you should be consistently getting contact information. You should be getting phone numbers. So what I want you to do from here is I want you to set aside a period of time every single day or every few days, set aside a explicit period of time for following up for texting girls, for calling girls, for following up and trying to make dates. One of the biggest mistakes guys make in learning game is they do the approach and they get a number and they feel great about it. And then they realize that a lot of times numbers flake. And so they get this habit of not following up with their numbers. They do the part that feels good, they don't do the part that doesn't feel good but it's necessary to get results. It is absolutely critical you follow up with your numbers. So set aside a certain period of time and during that period, you have to text and call until you have either gotten dates set up for the week or you have gone through all the numbers that you have. You are not allowed to leave numbers uncontacted. You're not allowed to leave numbers stale and just rest on your laurels that it was a good set. You need to find out whether it actually was and you need to actually play to win, not just to feel good. This may not sound like a big deal, this may sound obvious, but this is literally one of the biggest things that differentiates the guys that win at this and the guys that quit or don't succeed. So now you're high level intermediate, you're getting results, you're getting dates, you have a great dating life. But it may still feel a little bit like it's a numbers game. It may still feel like you don't get to choose the girls you really like, and it may still feel like your game works better on the girls that are just cute, but the absolute hottest girls is not quite working. That's the transition to advanced. And the biggest thing you need to do to transition to advanced is you need to flip the script. Up to this point, it may feel like you're the one hitting on the girl, you're the one escalating, you're the one trying to make things happen, and the girl's like, okay, I like him, I'll let it happen. As an advanced guy, it's time to flip that around. What you wanna work on, and this is the advanced mission, is make your focus not how far you can take the set, not how much you can escalate. Make it instead how much you get her to qualify and how much you get her to fall into your frame. You want her to be following your lead in the conversation. You want her to be selling herself to you as would she be worthy to be your girlfriend rather than screening you for are you worthy to be her boyfriend. And little tips for this, you wanna start challenging the girl from the very beginning. You wanna start disqualifying her, and then you wanna start giving her tests, giving her hurdles that she can jump over. This is what I want you to start doing as an advanced guy, and make this your focus for a while. Make it more important to you that she's the one reinitiating the conversation, and she's the one trying to prove herself to you, than whether or not you kiss her even, okay? It's less about how far the interaction goes, at least for a period of time, than it is about who's chasing who. That's your whole focus. Get her to chase you rather than you chasing her. That's advanced mission number one. The final mission of this video, we can call this the bonus advanced mission if you like, or I would almost call this the expert level mission, is I want you to learn to game at the lowest energy level possible. As you go through all these stages and all these missions, as you get field experience, you're gonna have a lot of things that work because you're being engaging, or work because you're being fun, or work because you're triggering emotion, and that's good and that's important, and that's a phase you need to go through. But the truly advanced guys 
get to a point where they're no longer the one putting in all the effort and they're not being try hard. They're actually gaming through intrigue and mystery and getting the girl to comply to things rather than through being dancing monkey or being super funny or putting a lot of energy in. When you can sit back low energy and the girl's the one putting energy in, that's when you've reached a truly high level. So the actual execution of this mission, and it is a little tough, is what I want you to do is when you're talking to the girl, I don't want you to put energy in until the set is almost done. Like if you feel she's about to leave, then you can put energy in to keep her there. And then I want you to just have the most chill, cool conversation you can. And then don't put more energy in until she's gonna leave again. And this is an incredibly frustrating mission and I do not recommend this for anyone who's not already advanced and who has not already had a lot of success because what will happen is you'll be sitting there with a hot girl in front of you and you'll know there are things you could do to get a result and you're actively not doing them. And it's very, very difficult emotionally and you will lose approaches because of it. If you can do this, two things are gonna happen. Number one, you're gonna learn to game low energy. Number two, you're going to truly become outcome independent. You're gonna become okay with walking away. You're gonna be okay with losing the set and that's absolutely critical. Because at a deep level, if you're not willing to walk away or if you're more reactive to her or if you're afraid of losing it, you're going to make subtle low value behaviors and low value moves that are gonna show her that you don't deserve her, that are gonna show her that you're not actually the guy you're conveying yourself to be through the gaming moves you're doing, all right? So you're learning now at this stage to game not through gaming moves, but through your persona through your energy, through being yourself and being the most high level, high value version of yourself. And so you're dropping the game from your game. And this will be a tough transition. Again, you will lose sets from doing this that you would have gotten otherwise. So don't do this until you're already doing well and already very confident. But this is the final step in going from advanced to truly expert world-class levels of game. So that's the video, seven steps to get you from beginner to advanced. Go out there and do them. Do them in order, they build on themselves. And if you do these steps, a lot of the technical things in game will fill in naturally. Having this focus and having this action plan will work on a lot of techniques automatically for you. So go do these, you're gonna get results from it if you actually take the action. All right, that's it. Hope you liked the video. If you did, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.